Canary by Cloud Nine and Three Quarters. Chapter 27. The problem with fame. The UA uniform is too recognizable. Midoriya knew Ida wouldn't be pleased when he discovered that Midoriya had been shoving his blazer in his backpack and replacing it with his big yellow hoodie, but he didn't have much of a choice. He was too recognizable. Once upon a time, Midoriya considered himself to be rather plain looking, especially in a world of quirks. However, his bushy green hair and the similarly colored bird which nestled within it were apparently more of an identifiable feature than he initially thought. Now that hair was hidden underneath his hood, and Siren had come to appreciate the comfort of the hoodie pocket as long as she wasn't squished. Midoriya breathed a sigh of relief when he finally stumbled out of the crowded train carriage, pulling his hood down further over his face, weaving in and out of people's paths as he headed up the hill to UA. His cheek itched. It was his only real injury, excluding a couple of cuts and bruises, and of course, quirks exhaustion, if that counted. They'd tried their best to heal it, without the use of quirks, since no one strong enough like a recovery girl was on hand. But for some reason, the crack-like shape persisted to mar the side of his face. They said the scar would fade, given time. Midoriya didn't mind it too much, though. It was just off-center from the diamond shape that his freckles made, not quite reaching all of them. It was just another feature that would make him that little bit more recognizable if it decided not to disappear, that was. He glanced down at his phone, tapping off the music app that blasted the sounds through his new set of wireless headphones. He'd taken the last apart to see how they worked and used a lot of the parts to build the set he'd used in the sports festival. The other pair were specifically for his hero costume, which meant he now acquired a new set for leisure and blocked out the rest of the world. His finger hovered above his social media app as he continued to trudge forward. It had been a few days since he was released from the hospital. Monday and the incident with Stain had been back on last Wednesday. For the rest of the week, Midoriya had been shut up at home. Shinzo had too, so they'd talked for a while over the phone trying to kill the time. But both had purposefully avoided the news for the entirety of their lockdown, for lack of a better word. Someone grabbed his shoulder. Midoriya almost fell over in surprise as a familiar someone pulled the hood down and grabbed his headphones from his ears. I called for you at least three times, Jiro sighed. She glanced down at the headphones now in her hands. Oh, hey, isn't it Japanese stuff too? Midoriya turned off the music and took the headphones back sheepishly. She must have been able to hear the song despite not wearing the headset herself because of her quirk. That or the music was just loud enough to hear anyway. Yeah, of course. Midoriya stammered, folding up the headphones and shoving it into his bag, taking the blazer out after a second thought and quickly replacing it with his hoodie, after Siren had untangled herself, of course, and returned to her favorite position. On his head. And there's the other one, Jiro acknowledged. Midoriya looked up to see Shinso running towards them, skidding to a halt as Midoriya slung his backpack over his shoulder in. Morning, he panted. Where are the others? I, I kind of ran out of the train station without looking for Uraka, Midoriya admitted guiltily. Hopefully she went ahead. Understandable. Jiro nodded as the three of them began to walk the rest of the way to UA. You don't want to be recognized, especially after the stunt you two pulled last Wednesday. Shinsu just grinned. Knock, knock. Of course, Midoriya had sent his location to the aviary group chat, so it wasn't just Todoroki and Shinso who were alerted, but Jiro and Uraraka too. Shinso saw this as an adequate excuse to give them a blow-by-blow -blow account of what happened, in his point of view at least. Technically, he didn't give them much more information than what was released to the public. All they knew more was that Todoroki was there too, what songs Midoriya used, and how Stain was ultimately taken down. And Shinso was very proud of that story. The three of them were stifling their laughter about it all the way up the hill, with Jiro and Shinso reciting the worst possible jokes they knew to each other. Shinso's humor was certainly darker than Jiro's, but she tended to laugh at anything even remotely funny anyway. Anyway, did you honor our agreement? Shinso questioned as they made their way to their respective classrooms. Midoriya frowned for a moment before finally remembering and nodding nervously. Uh, I haven't looked at the news at all. Or my social media. Eizora is going to have a fit. Is this the onion lady? Jiro sniggered. 
She wanted to meet you, actually. Midoriya recalled. She said you had a good social media presence or something, he muttered. They would have continued the conversation further if they didn't reach the door to Class 1C in that moment. Jiro did a double take before she said deeply, Every single time. I always forget that you two aren't in my class. You won't have to worry about that soon enough. Shinso smirked as he reached forwards to slide open the door to their classroom. See you at lunch. Midoriya waved feebly as Jiro did the same, although a little more enthusiastically, and turned back to Shiro as they walked into... Hell. Oh my god! You're here! Hey, it's Kanari! We're so glad you're... Okay? I saw it all over the news. I can't believe you took down a hero killer. Uh, um... Midoriya stammered, taking a few steps back so we almost walked right into the room. Shinso just sighed. Don't you think we've had just about enough of this kind of conversation? We? Oui? Kaneko frowned, her face rather close to Shinzo's. He probably would have stepped back too if Midoriya wasn't standing. Hiding? Went behind him. Why would they talk to you about staying? Midoriya saw Shinzo's eye twitch and decided that would be the best time to step in the best he could. Hey, do you think we could get to more tests? He practically whispered. The act of him speaking at all was seemingly so powerful that the entire class immediately parted to let them through with Oshi grasping Kaneko's shoulders to pull her out of Shinzo's way. Thank you, Midoriya murmured and hurried through to locate his desk. Shinzo still stamped on her pink cat tail as he walked past. There was yow and a hiss, but Shinzo just smirked as he slid into his space behind Midoriya. Kaneko stood there scowling for a moment, stroking the end of her tail. As the rest of the class departed to their various places around the room, though, Kaneko seemed to recover and bounce back over to Midoriya. So, how would you do it? She asked eagerly, leaning on his desk, tail twitching from side to side from the little hole in her skirt for it. How did it I? He repeated. Of course, he wasn't too sure what information had been released to the public. Seemingly, the actual details of how Stain had been defeated weren't known, which was a relief. He resisted the temptation to bury his face in his hands at the thought of Texic. Come on! Why does a person like this person in the room whenever Midoriya was having an awkward conversation? He realized that he had been sitting there freaking out internally for a little too long now. Nearly all the class was staring curiously at him, and Kaneko was uncomfortably close. He tried to at least explain that he couldn't legally give out much details, but instead his mouth just ended up hanging open, letting out a croaky squeak. Nope, this definitely wasn't going to work today. Midoriya just ended up flushing red and hanging his head. Kaneko huffed and stood up, her tail still twitching, but seemingly in irritation this time. I don't get it! Why don't you talk to us? Do you just not like us or something? There were a few people around the class who winced slightly or raised a hand about to interrupt Kaneko and protest as to why that was not the right thing to say! Even if she grimaced. But of course Shinso beat them all to it. Maybe he would if you weren't so intrusive. He snarled, getting out of his chair. Now move! Before I make you. She flinched slightly, instinctively reaching toward her tail and grasping where Shinzo had trodden on it. After a moment's thought, she turned her nose up in the air and stormed back across the classroom to her seat. Midoriya sighed, of all the days for present, Mike, to be late. The end of the semester couldn't come any faster. Bakugo was busy beating up Sero and Kirishima for laughing at his hair. What he didn't know was that Jiro had stuck a picture and already sent it to her favorite group chat. Yes, the Class A ladies took second place. She liked the girls in her class. They were nice, but man, she was really looking forward to having Canary and Shinso in Class 1A2. Involving them in the mayhem was the closest she could get to it at the moment. She had been hanging out with Mina and Suyu, talking about their internships. Jiro had been telling anyone who would listen about the dentist incident. It was the only exciting thing that happened. As it turns out, most of the others hadn't come across anything really story-worthy at all. Suyu was the exception, and then, of course, there was Todoroki and Ida. Quite a lot of the class were crowded around them at the moment. Kaminar was going on about Stain's morals and stuff. 
There had been no real footage of Stain's defeat or him announcing his motives to the world, but some anonymous person out there had made a rather terrifying video explaining his ideology to anyone who would listen, and that number turned out to be staggeringly high. However, that number most certainly did not include Ida, who not only had serious damage in his arm from the villain, but his brother had been put in a wheelchair by him. Seriously, Kaminari, think through what you're saying. Well, he did realize his mistake, but only after he called the guy cool. He hadn't known Todoroki was involved too, but come on, he definitely should have thought about Ida. What about Canary? Questioned Dojo. Wasn't either. Oh yeah, everyone's saying he defeated the guy alongside Mr. Aizawa and someone called Brain Blank. Recalled Zero, finally freeing himself from Bakugo's vengeful grip. It's super manly! Kirishima exclaimed. Imagine having to go up against someone as scary as that and sing! Even worse, he's not even had any of the training that we have, but he still came out on top! I'm super curious. What songs do you think he used? Toru wondered, bouncing up and down. Hey, Ida, could you tell us? If it hasn't been released to the public, he probably shouldn't say anything. Araraka quickly interjected. Oh, yeah, good point. She bowed in. Well, Jiro assumed she did. It wasn't like he, she could see her facial expression. Hey, Ajaka! Mina frowned. Aren't you close friends with Midoriya? Her face suddenly split into a wide smile upon realization. Wait, are you one of the five who talks about on the radio? Like Owl and Raven and whatnot? Araraka hesitated, but then realized that there wasn't really any way of getting around it, so she just smiled and nodded. Yeah, I came up with the names, actually. Meaning gasped. What would my be? Um, Flamingo? Jiro watched on in vague interest as Urabaka started labeling as many of their classmates as they could with bird names. All the while, Ida frantically attempted to get them all to sit down before Mr. Aizawa arrived. Jiro was an incredibly observant person. She blamed it on her quirk. So it wouldn't have been a surprise to anyone that she was the only one to notice one of her classmates seeming a little... Off. Bakugo sat in his chair right next to hers, glaring down at his phone, practically seething with anger. Jiro would have expected him to be a little more infuriated with his hair situation, or at least leave Hiroshima and Saro regretting laughing at him. But all he did was drag them by their collars for a bit and spit angry words at the two morons for a moment. As soon as the talk about Ganaria had started, he took himself away as if he didn't want to hear a word of it. But, tilting her head a little, Jiro could spy the news article on his phone. The hero killer stain, defeated by the power of music. She chuckled to herself, thinking of the alternative title that Shiro had messaged them about. But there would have been no way that the officials or whoever was behind that kind of stuff would have let that happen. The public wouldn't have had much faith in their heroes if they discovered that one of the most dangerous criminals at the moment, connected to the League of Villains and everything, was taken down by a knock-knock joke. But Bakugo wasn't laughing. He angrily closed the tabs on his phone. There were a lot of them all along Ganeri. Jiro narrowed her eyes. What did Bakugo have against Canary? Whilst Bakugo spent his week getting groomed at that useless internship, Deku, well look at him, he's all over the freaking news! Canary this, Canary that, is all anyone's talking about. Well, that or the hero killer and the bastard's connection to the League of Villains. Bakugo fought the League of Villains, but no one seems to care much about that. They don't seem to care that he won the sports festival, one of the biggest freaking sporting events in the world. But all that said world focused on the most stupid second place. Deku went from the quirkless loser that would never amount to anything to a hero, supposedly on an equal playing ground with people like him. Bakugo hadn't even expected Deku to get into UA, but he had supposed that general studies was good enough as long as he wasn't following him around anymore. But then... He got a quirk and a weird as hell one too. Singing? What kind of a superpower is singing? But Bakugo barely won the sports festival. What would have happened if Deku didn't have that quirk exhaustion problem? Would he have actually won 
That loser who'd been beneath him all this time had suddenly soared past and barely even giving him a second glance as he did so. But with internships over, Bakugo had something else to pay half a mind to. Exams. It wasn't like you wouldn't pass. He knew he would. He was in the top three of the class or something. He didn't really pay attention to that, but ponytail and glasses were far too nerdy. Anyway, he also had the task of beating the term's lessons into Kirishima's skull. And for a guy with a hardening quirk, Bakugo just had to hope he wasn't really that dense. He was eating lunch with him now. Him and some of the other idiots who ended up following him around, like upgraded versions of the morons from middle school. Not that good though. Zero multiplied by anything was still zero. That included elbows, raccoon eyes, and sparky, as well as weird hair, of course. Rather than focusing on the fact that most of them were ranked near the bottom of the class, or THE bottom of the class for midterms, they had instead diverted their attention to trying to stomach a small piece of Black and Girls lunch. Sparky was stupid enough to try and douse his mouth with water, which just made it worse. Elbows was just suffering. Weird Hair was at the very least smart enough not to follow them by their example. But Raccoon Eyes' acid must have messed up her tongue or something because she didn't seem to have a problem. Seriously, it's not that bad, she protested, trying to sneak another bite as Bakugo just glared at her. He knocked the bottle of hot sauce that got to the table to her. Eat your mouth food. Oh, thanks, she exclaimed and happily poured the spice over her nato. You're crazy, Sparky guessed, wheezing for air as if that would help. Why would you do this? Sero added, shoving mouthfuls of rice into his mouth in hopes that it would take the spice away. I can ask you the same question, Kirishima pointed out. Plus, it's not very manly to steal someone else's food. Ex freaking Ackley. Bakugo grumbled. As the others started glancing around the food in search of some kind of imbecile brings milk to school for whatever reason, Bakugo ended up catching the eye of the only other one of his classmates that he can somewhat tolerate from time to time. Giro. She's the kind of no-nonsense, chill kind of girl who really can't be bothered to deal with the drama, despite knowing absolutely all of it. She never got on his nerves, hardly even spoke to him, and generally just kept her distance unless they were paired together in class. Bakugo could respect that. She nodded at him distantly and began to walk off across the room in search of a place to sit and eat. Bakugo would have somehow brought it raccoon eyes to invite her over or something. There was a space free on their table, but then... Across the hall, earphones slid into a chair on a table of five others. There was pink cheeks, icy hot glasses, that brainwashing bastard, and... Deku! It took only a few seconds for Bakugo to make the connection. These were... These were the people from Deku's freaking group chat! With the stupid bird names and everything! Bakugo gritted his teeth. The semester was almost over. Once exams had passed and that summer camp too, the winter term would begin. With it, it was very likely that Deku and his little friend would fill the spaces left empty in class 1A. But it looked like they'd already made themselves at home all happy and smiley and... Chetty! Damn it! This was his dream! He was going to be, number one, the best the world had ever seen! And Deku just had to come along and ruin it. Why? He didn't understand. Why couldn't he just leave him alone? Just disappear, fade from Bakugo's life just like he should have done long ago. Bakugo had always been the one with the most potential. He was born to be a hero with a quirk greater than any of the other powers his old classmates possessed. Deku never stood a chance. But now he's the one with the power, the popularity. He was the one that everyone was watching, the one with the potential and the drive. Bakugo slipped into the shadows, a background character in Canary's origin story. A few weeks later. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Pandoria felt like crying. He gripped the sheet of paper, revealing his exam results so tightly that it probably wasn't far from ripping in his shaking hands. He passed! Well, a little more than passed, actually, but that factor wasn't relevant. Shinso didn't think so. You got 80%? He gaped, leaning over Midoriya's shoulder and staring at the percentage Midoriya jotted underneath the remark. Uh, uh, a little under, actually. I just rounded up. By how much? It was like 
79 and a half or something. He mumbled nervously, placing the sheet of paper down on his desk and trying to flatten out the creases he made. Shinzo just sighed and stared at the ceiling for a moment as if contemplating why he'd even bothered asking. I'm out. And he walked the whole two meters back over to his own desk and fell back into his chair. Well, what did you get? Midoriya questioned curiously, barely getting over the fact that- Oh my god, he passed! And now focused on the second most important, or arguably the first, factor of the day. Barely 70. Shinso said, not leaving the paper detailing his marks from each subject in Midoriya's line of sight for long enough for him to criticize his skills in working out percentages. Poor. But you passed! Shinso grinned. Hell yeah, I passed. If that's not a pass, then I'm scared to ask what is. Midoriya smiled lightly. Then we've done it! Did you seriously have any doubt that you would get into the hero course? Shinso asked, raising an eyebrow and crossing his arms. I could have not passed, Midoriya acknowledged. And we had to pass the end of term exams, or else we wouldn't be allowed in next semester, and then- I'm going to stop you right there, Shinso interrupted, holding up a hand. You were always going to pass the exam. But there's always a possibility that- Don't even start, Shinso groaned. This discussion is already giving me a headache. Just accept the truth. But I- Accept it. What I don't get is why there was a question on hero law. Oji protested loudly. Shinzo rolled his eyes. I can't wait to get out of this clause. He signed to Midoriya, who struggled not to smile, before turning to Oshi and saying, Because this is general studies. Exactly! Not the hero course. General studies, Shinzo repeated, as in, we're supposed to gain a general spread of information. Besides, it was only one question. She threw her hands up in the air. But still! Speaking of the hero course! President Mike interjected. He'd only just arrived, walking into the room with wide eyes at the argument and only speaking when he finally had the chance to move away from the awkward subject. He pointed dramatically at Midoriya and Shinzo. You passed the end of term examinations! Congratulations! Well, all of you did, which is great to hear! But for Shinzo and Midoriya, this only means one thing! Can we leave your class yet? Shinzo speaks. President Mike pretended to look hurt. Then again, that might not have been pretend. I was about to tell you how much I was going to miss you having you in our wonderful number! Siren's coming with us, Shinso pointed out. You must be the least bit relieved. He hesitated. Uh, where is she? The class looked back to Midoriya, who instinctively looked to his hair. But the bird didn't appear. He just shrugged. <laughs> She's probably hiding a body, Shinso said ominously. <laughs> Everyone simultaneously narrowed their eyes at him. But they didn't know that Siren almost blinded Anomu, so they most likely didn't even know what Anomu was. Moving swiftly for friends! President Mike wisely decided to proclaim, We have a glorious final assembly with our wonderful principal Nazim! You know he's being sarcastic when he says things like glorious. Shinzo whispered to Midoriya. Midoriya sniggered. Money! I know, weird to just come into school for an assembly and then be off for the summer, but here we are! This means that today is your very last school day of the first term! President Mike paused and sniffed loudly like he was trying not to cry. Most likely just being melodramatic again, though. And now, if your very last English lesson... Uh, Kana raised her hand uncertainly as she spoke. Don't we have you next term, Mr. Mike, sir? It's just favoritism. Oh, she sighed, giving Midoriya a look which she wasn't too sure how to interpret. Was she just joking? Maybe she hated him for it? Maybe he was just overthinking this. But maybe... Don't you also teach English for the hero course? Shins ever called? Besides, it's not like Midoriya needs to do anything in these classes anyway. What I'm really going to miss, piped up Tajibana, is your quirk analysis! Oh wow, I'm just loved, Shinzo said sarcastically to no one at all in particular. 
I'm gonna miss Shinzo's ability to shut Kanekan up, stated Watanabe. They didn't do much, that English lesson. Well, they learned how to throw insults at each other in both Japanese and English, more or less. So at least that was something. Midoriya wasn't too sure if he was going to miss Class 1C, but after everything, at least it ended on a happier note than it began. They had to pass, right? Eribaka reaffirmed, leaning out of the door of Class 1A and peering down the long way. Pass and then get into the hero course? That is what they informed us, yes. Ida nodded, standing close by with an extra two pamphlets for the summer camp in his grasp. Perhaps they were speaking with Principal Nanzu at lunch. That would explain why we didn't see them. We saw Siren, though, Jiro pointed out. The bird had spontaneously appeared in their classroom earlier that morning to hang out with Koda. No one knew what initiated it, and Koda didn't really understand either. But it resulted in several interesting revelations, including but not limited to Mina being absolutely terrified of the creature, Siren cozying up to only Koda and the rest of the Arya, but no one else, and the discovery that she seemed to have some kind of personal vendetta against Bakugo, which no one but Uraraka could vaguely understand. And Uraraka refused to explain, which made it even more intriguing. Then again, Jiro was a naturally curious person. She liked to be in the know. She never really did anything with the information she collected. She just liked to hoard it. Wherever Simon is, Canary isn't far behind. Todoroki acknowledged. Speaking of the devil, Jiro sighed. She could already hear the distant sound of beating wings hurtling through the corridors. The green blur rocketed past them, did a loop in the air, and then flung herself back towards them, stopping millimeters from the top of Ida's nose. <coughs> Hi, Siren! Araraka giggled. Out of all of them, for some reason, Siren decided that Jiro's shoulder was the best one to perch on this time. But this, of course, meant that she was so distracted by the little ball of feathers that she didn't manage to predict the arrival of the last two members of their group until their faces appeared in the doorway. Canary! They all exclaimed at once. Shinzo came into view and blinked at them. This is the second time today. The favorite is really very clear. Shut up, Shinzo. No one loves you, said Jiro with zero remorse. Midoriya looked a little panicked, not seeming to understand Shinzo's and Jiro's attempt of humor as he pretended to be shot and tumbled out of sight. Siren just chirped that laugh-like noise of hers as if she understood too. But, but the exams! How did they go? Rebecca pressed eagerly, standing on the balls of her feet in anticipation. I think it's unfair they made us wait this long. Shinzo sighed, probably avoiding Rebecca's question on purpose just to drive her up the wall. Marking first year general studies must be pretty low on UA's list of priorities. Oh, just tell us! Rebecca cried, grabbing the attention of the rest of class 1A still milling around the classroom behind them. Of course, we passed. Shinzo huffed. You think he wouldn't? He gaped, pointing at Midoriya. You some kind of secret super genius or something then? Jiro smirked as Midoriya blushed furiously and messed with his air in embarrassment. You should see his notebooks, continued Shinzo. He's drawn freaking mathematical diagrams on his quirk. Jiro narrowed her eyes. How? They're just decreasing exponential functions! Midoriya muttered as if that explained anything at all. Why are we talking about this when we should be excited that you're on the air, of course? Iraraka yelled, punching the sky. If they hadn't got the rest of the class's attention before, they certainly had it now. We were talking with Principal Nezu at lunch. Midoriya continued rather quietly, increasingly aware of Jiro's approaching classmates. Most of them had now joined them, forming a small crowd by the door. We filled all the requirements, but Mr. Aizawa can still choose to not accept us if we don't do well in the summer training camp. Wait, you're coming to our camp? Mina suddenly exclaimed, pushing past Jiro unintentionally harshly. She somehow didn't knock Siren off Jiro's shoulder, though. Her little talons must have been gripping onto Jiro's blazer rather firmly. Midoriya backed off a little, clearly hesitant about the sudden attention. 
Jiro thought he'd be getting used to it by this point. She wasn't sure if he would still be classified as mute at all for much longer. But nonetheless, he was still very shy. I have two spare pamphlets on the matter. Ida interjected gleefully. It is imperative you have acquired all the necessary equipment before we leave next week. Shinzo waved him off. It's fine, we've already been given them. He explained, indicating to the black rucksack hanging off his shoulder. Ida looked rather disappointed. He couldn't prove his organization skills worthy. Hi! It's so good to meet you, Canary! Interrupted Hagagare, also bouncing into view beside Mina. Shinzo looked to Jiro with an expression that perfectly conveyed the message. Yep, I am certainly loved by all. In a very sarcastic tone. Midoriya just let out a nervous squeak and a feeble wave. Siren hopped off Jiro's shoulder to reach Midoriya. Instead, her very presence seemed to make the tension fade from his shoulders. It's good to meet both of you, said the omniscient Yaoyorozu. My name is Yaoyorozu. I'm the vice president, whilst Ida is the head representative of Class A. We look forward to having you here. Midoriya and Shinzo just stared at her like they didn't know it were possible for Hero Course students could be sane up until that moment. Well, have you got everything the summer camp requires? Ida questioned, who was very adamant that they were prepared. Shinzo gave him a look. A blend on getting a sleeping bag like a razor head and only emerging for training. I don't need anything else. Midoriya signed something to Shinzo quickly, which prompted a slight grin. From the context of the situation and the way he moved his hands, Jiro could only assume he just compared Shinzo to a butterfly. Now there was the ridiculous image of a massive purple Shinzo butterfly in Jiro's head, and she couldn't help but smile at it too. Then why don't you come with us to the mall tomorrow? Hagakure suggested enthusiastically. We're all going to buy the last few things we need for camp. You should tag along. Midoriya shook his head immediately, almost shaking Siren free from his hair where she decided to nestle again. Why not? Araraka questioned, bouncing slightly in disappointment. Uh, I, uh, um, he stammered, waving his arms about in what was definitely not sign language and just your panic. But when it came to Midoriya, there was often a thin line between the two anyway. I'm not going, Todoroki shrugged. Don't worry about it. Wait, why aren't you coming? Jiro frowned. Busy, he said simply. Bakugo's not coming either! Kirishima interjected. He too pushed past Jiro without realizing it and held out his hand to Shinso, who was the closest of the two. Hey, I'm Kirishima. We've met before, but not, like, officially. Shinso took his hand after a moment's hesitated. Shinso. And it's Midoriya, right? Kirishima reaffirmed, now ready to shake Midoriya's hand too. Or do you prefer Canary? Midoriya just shrugged sheepishly and shook Kirishima's hand weakly. Come on, Canary! It'll be fun! Mina insisted. You'll have to go out shopping anyway at some point, Jiro pointed out. So if it's your fame you're worried about, at least you'll have us around this time. She really just wanted to hang out with Canary and Shinzo more, even if that meant dragging them along with the entire class. At least it was something. Midoriya's gaze flipped between the various members of his soon-to-be class unsurely, but then, after an encouraging tweet from the Siren, he clenched his fists and nodded. That's awesome, man! Kirishima exclaimed. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. In that case, Yaoyorozu smiled. Yeah! Mina cried. You won't regret this! That's a promise! Ida sends them his exact global position when trying to get everyone to be in the same place at the same time the next day. It didn't help much, but eventually the large group came into view. They didn't notice Midoriya at first. He had his hood pulled up over his face in a desperate attempt to stay unnoticed. He only owned two hoodies, the bright yellow one and this gray one, which had the word hoodie written across the front as part of a set of either ironic tops that his dad had been gifting him over the years. He had a strange sense of humor. Not as weird as Shinto's, though. He had followed Siren through the crowd, who was now sitting in Koda's palms and staring at him, beckoning him over with those big, beady eyes of hers. Hi, there he is! Mina exclaimed once Midoriya reached her side. I thought you had chickened out! This place is huge! Shinzo gaped, not making a big deal of Midoriya's arrival. Thankfully, 
But he was right. Midoriya had never been to the mall before, let alone actually hung out with friends outside of school or the radio station. Clearly Shinzo hadn't either. Ida was muttering about adequate footwear for the trip and instructing how the class could split up to visit all the places they needed to, but Midoriya was rather transfixed on the mall itself. There were shops designed with so many different quirks in mind, from modified tops to enlarged shoe sizes. He was so busy darting his head around that he was only brought back down to earth by, ironically, Uraraka tapping him on the shoulder. He jumped a little at the notion. Uraraka laughed. Where do you need to go, Canary? She asked. Midoriya blinked. He probably should have thought of this before coming here. Well, he had. He had a list of what he needed. But that didn't mean he knew which shop would have what and where that shop might possibly be or if it was even sold in the mall at all or... We'll just sit down in the cafe for a bit or something. Shinso sighed, walking over to Midoriya after taking Siren from Koda and then plunking her down in Midoriya's hands. Then we'll figure out where to go from there. Oh, we can come too! Mina suggested eagerly. Wow, everyone sure is excited to hang out with me, huh? Midoriya realized worriedly. He wasn't too sure if this was a good idea yet. Look, we'll get a large table at that coffee shop over there, and we can all go back and forth from that. Sound like a plan? Jiro suggested. Thankfully, that seemed to be okay with everyone else, and moments later, Midoriya found himself sitting at said coffee shop, watching Siren peck at his muffin, while surrounded by his more comfortable group of friends, with everyone else in Class 1A heading off in different directions around the mall. Sorry about that, Harry. Jiro said, sipping at her coffee and grimacing slightly. She'd gotten the same as shin soap, which was seemingly very strong. He blinked at her. It's okay. Everyone in our class is really nice. Araraga smiled. You'll get used to them eventually. Sorry if they're a little overbearing at the moment. They're just super excited to meet you properly. You guys can always go off shopping. You need to get stuff for Gimp. He insisted, pulling at his falling apart muffin a bit and popping some in his mouth before Siren could murder it all. I've got pretty much everything, Jiro replied, but I think I'd like a really big duffel bag for all my stuff. Midoriya suddenly came to the profound realization that not everything in the world would fit in his trusty yellow rucksack and his school PE bag. Yeah, I might need one of those too. I'm all set too. Araraka admitted. Although some bug spray might be handy. We've always got Siren to deal with the bugs. Shinzo pointed out, accepting Jiro's discarded coffee. What do you need, Shinzo? Wondered Ida. Ida himself was bound to be already fully prepared, so there was no point in asking him to. I wasn't kidding about the sleeping bag. Shinzo replied. Other than that, I don't really see what else I would need. Have you checked the manual thing? Midori questioned. Yeah, I'm sure I've got most of what I need lying around at home. The pamphlet says we don't need to bring sleeping bags or roll mats. Ida protested. He just pulled a copy of the blue guide from his pocket. Shinzo finished his coffee and slammed the empty cup down on the table. I will be a caterpillar and no one can stop me. Um, excuse me? The four of them turned around. Standing beside Midoriya was a girl with reddish-purple hair and little fangs sicking out the corners of her mouth. She grinned wildly when Midoriya's eyes met hers. Oh my gosh! Hi! She continued. You guys are from UA, right? We saw you on the sports festival! At the word we, her two other friends scurried forwards, one with dark hair styled similarly to Uraraka's but a little longer, and the other had her camera phone out, not turned on yet, but clearly excited to use it. You guys are so cool, the last one gushed. And you're Canary, right? He smiled and rubbed his head, knocking the hood down in the process. Hi, the first girl repeated. I listened to your show for the first time last Thursday, and I honestly don't know why I never tried it before. But all this news on staying got me intrigued. Is it true you helped take it down? Midoriya knew this would happen. It was exactly why he didn't want to come out in the first place. But at the same time, he was glad his friends were there. He didn't know what he'd do without them. The three girls weren't the only ones to come up to him that day. He met a guy who'd called the radio before when buying duffel bags with Jiro, giving an autograph to a little boy who dragged his parents over him to say hello. 
almost passed out when someone pointed at him, yelled, and ran up to show off merchandise of him that he just bought. But as the encounters became more and more frequent, with more people obviously realizing he was in the area, he started to feel that little bit more confident. It wasn't that bad, greeting all these different people and smiling at them. The compliments were a little overwhelming, but in the end, all he was doing was making them happy. And wasn't that the first step towards being a hero anyway? Shinzo was busy glaring at the selection of sleeping bags, decided which would grant him high caterpillar capacity. Whatever that meant, but it was taking him so long that he insisted they should go back to the coffee shop and meet him there. Midoriya had left his new duffel bag with him so he could shove whatever sleeping bag he decided on inside. Jiro had met up with Yaoyorozu and, after some debate, promised she'd see Midoriya later and followed her friend off to get a duffel bag for her, too. Ida had disappeared after he apparently spotted an old classmate following Mina and Hagakare into a swimwear shop. Whatever the story behind that was, Midoriya didn't want to know. That left him with just a remarka who had only just located the bug spray she wanted. This stuff is way too expensive, she pouted, glaring down at the bottle in her hand. Maybe I should go back and get a cheaper one? Uh, I can always help, Midoriya offered. He had plenty of money stored up from the radio station anyway. Oh no, it's okay, Araraka insisted. I feel bad. Anyway, I don't think they're taking us anywhere tropical. Some weaker bug spray should be fine. She nodded, satisfied with her conclusion. She ended up paying for the cheapest bottle available. They were walking back over to the cafe when she stopped suddenly and gasped loudly before throwing her hands over her mouth. What is it? Midoriya questioned curiously. N Nothing! She exclaimed. I, I just had an idea, but... You can't know! Midoriya blinked at her. What now? I'll see you back at the coffee shop, okay? She insisted, already starting to back away into the crowd. You love it, I promise! And with that, she was gone. Midoriya stood still for a moment longer, watching Siren tweet furiously after Uberaka's disappearing form, diving over the heads of other passers by as she tried to herd Uberaka back to Midoriya. He sighed and smiled. This whole day actually hadn't been that bad. He had a horrible sinking feeling weighing him down all morning as he waited for the clock to strike 12.30 so we could head off from home and catch the train to Kiyashi Ward Shopping Mall. But now that he was actually here, he could finally say that he enjoyed hanging out with friends who enjoyed hanging out with him. Even the people who recognized him as Canary had been nice and open-hearted. No troubles at all. Wow, wow, wow. Is that Canary? Midoriya smiled and glanced to his left, where a black-hooded man had just appeared. Er, hi! He squeaked as he uncomfortably put his arm around his shoulders. Nice to meet you. Think you could give me an autograph? He asked, pulling a crumpled-up receipt from his pocket, seemingly for Midoriya to sign. I've listened to some of your shows. You really are becoming quite popular, aren't you? You really dominated the headlines after you defeated the hero killer. All over the front pages. Oh, um, well, it wasn't really just me. I helped, but I... Now, now, don't throw away the credits. The man smiled. Midoriya didn't like that smile. And he'd seen a lot of creepy smiles. But this one wasn't like Eozor's or Shinso's or even Mr. Aizawa's. It was... Wrong. You've got a very interesting cook. You share some parallels with mine. And then that receipt in his free hand turned to dust, lost to the gentle breeze. His other hand, it was around Midoriya's throat. He didn't like this. He didn't like this at all. Midoriya turned to the stranger, shaking as he met his bloodshot red eyes through dirty blue-gray hair. All right. From your point of view, we haven't been at all, have we? After all, you weren't in class one day when I joined them at the USJ. As soon as all five of my fingers touch your throat, well, it'll be fast. 
Shigaraki taunted the trembling boy, hovering his last finger tantalizingly close to his soft skin. You'll be nothing more than dusted powdered bone, much like how you left my normal. The, the heroes would catch you. Canary barely managed to utter. Shigaraki could feel his throat rising and falling beneath his hand as panic racked the little hero's body. It would be so easy to crush the bird before he even had the chance to take flight. So fragile. So delicate. It was a wonder how Stain had such a hard time against him. But he was having more fun talking to him at the moment, pointing out all those sheep the people who milled around the mall with sickeningly happy, smiling faces. So many had the potential to cause such devastation like he could. Like Canary could. It was only their morals that stopped them. How did they know that everyone around them had the same ideals? They were sitting on a bench together, now Shigaraki's hand never leaving Canary's neck. When it comes down to it, Shigaraki sighed. I hate basically everything. But above it all, it's you and the hero killer who seem to drive me up the wall the most right now. But, Stain, yours? Shigaraki almost laughed. Canary was so scared, he could barely speak. Not technically, but that's what the media made it look like, he admitted. Stain had never been on his side, but that didn't make any sense to him. They were doing practically the same thing. The hero killer destroyed what he hated most, just like Shigaraki. He told Canary so. You fought him, Shigaraki smiled. But you haven't fought me. Have you heard of me at all? He was still shaking. It took a moment for him to open his mouth to reply, but nothing distinguishable came out. I guess. Shigaraki remembered it now. You're selectively mute, aren't you? How silly of me. But neither way, you can at least listen to me. It's not like I have a ch choice. He whispered nervously, claiming his mouth shut as soon as he said so, like he was scared something else would fall out. Shigaraki's cracked lips smiled wider. No, you don't. He sighed and looked back at the crowd, buzzing with life and activity. Don't you think it's strange that someone like you could steal the spotlight? You were Kirkless before you, eh, right? That must have been hard. Did the world not beat you down for it? Or are you even more blessed than I thought? Canary tensed even more beside him. No, no. They did. His voice was so quiet, barely audible at all over the noise of the shopping mall. Shigaraki let out a small laugh. Isn't that strange? You, me, the hero killer. We all have a similar goal. We all want change. But go about it in a different way. Ah, uh, yes. Change. I hadn't thought about it like that before. What do I want to change about this world? What about you? Although I guess you've already changed what you wanted to. The world already sees you. They don't see me yet. Not how I want it to. I am nothing like you! Canary growled, a strange confidence arising in him under the pressure of the encounter. Then what's the difference? At least between me and a hero killer. Canary gulped and then turned his head to gaze down at his bright red shoes. Red like the blood of his past. From what I've heard of you... You destroy for the fun of it. The hero killer, he had real motives. They were wrong. I don't agree with them. But he had real convictions. Shigaraki's grip grew tighter at the words. That was what Stain had told him. But Canary continued a little more panic riding in his voice now. He, he was inspired by All Might. He wanted to make a change. Yes, he wanted to get rid of... <laughs> Fake heroes, those who didn't stay true to the word's definition, but you just want to destroy. His voice trailed off as he caught the look on Shigaraki's face. 
His grip grew tighter still. What about you, then? Shigaraki questioned menacingly. What is all might to you? He is the symbol of peace, Canary replied almost immediately. I, I, I don't know him well, but he is a hero. Heroes are my inspiration. I want to be like them and stop people like you. He started to squirm now as Shigaraki's shaking hand pinched his skin. But then Shigaraki's eyes widened, his hand loosening a little, ignoring Canary's panicked breaths. There, across the mall, was a little girl holding an All Might action figure. He darted his eyes around and he could see him. He was everywhere, his obnoxious, smiling face baring his teeth down at the mall. He wasn't even truly there, yet his presence was still felt, like some kind of omnipotent god. But he was only human. They all were. That's it! Shigaraki grinned. That's the problem! I had convictions all along, I just couldn't see them until now. Nothing's changed. Nothing at all. All Might! He's the reason all these people can smile so thoughtlessly whilst people are being murdered all across the world. He's the reason this society exists as it is. He really is a pillar. Holding it all up. Take it down. And the world will come crashing down with it. Take away the pillar. And show them all how fragile they really are. He turned back to Canary. He was hyperventilating now. It was so funny. Watching him panic. This was what they are all like inside. Behind that stupid grin there is a frightened child. Incredible how such a small, pathetic little thing could hold so much power. Now what to do with it? He had been right earlier. Kill him now and the heroes would catch him. It would be good, yes, but not in the long run. No, he had conviction now. There was no need to throw that all away so soon. But that didn't mean he couldn't have a little fun. Hey, Midoriya? Shigaraki looked up. There was another kid there. He recognized him. The purple-haired hero that had been with Canary when he killed that Nomu. Brain Blank, the media had called him. He was just a child, too. This was no good. He was powerful. Shigaraki saw him in the sports festival. Brainwashing was a power to be feared. Are you... He continued unsurely, his eyes widening at the panic on his friend's expression. Whoops! Shigaraki exclaimed, cutting Brain Blank off. He let go of Canary, who shrunk away from him, gasping for air and coughing pathetically. I didn't realize you were here with friends. Who are you? Brain Blank demanded. Shigaraki stood up, sliding his hands into the pockets of his hoodie and smiling. He didn't answer the question. We'll be speaking again soon, Canary. He started to walk away. Blaine Brank hurried to Canary's side, dropping his large shopping bag on the floor. Shigaraki gripped the dismembered hand. Father. Waiting for him in his pocket. He turned back one last time, savoring the looks on their faces. That's a promise.